we already have a video covering the targeting options for Google Display Ads. But in this video, I'm going to go deeper into one of those options, and that is placement targeting. From my experience, using manual placements has had the best performance for our display campaigns. This is because we pretty much know exactly where our display ads can appear and can have better control over the message to that user who will be on that placement. So in this video, I want to show you a few of my ideas that I like to use when trying to research the best placements to target for my clients. Within the Google Ads interface, I already started to create a new ad group. After you've named your ad group, we need to scroll past the people section. You can always layer on audiences and demographics, but we want to get to content. That is where the placements targeting option is kind of hidden. So in this current view, I need to go to content targeting to expand this box. In there, we see we want to add placements to this ad group. Now we can start typing in specific keywords, URLs, or if you want to have a display ad on YouTube, you can start entering specific video IDs. And as we can see, the display network is more than just websites. Google's display network is compiled of millions of websites and mobile apps, as well as YouTube videos. So for the first portion of this video, I'm going to use a recent client we started working with. They have a product that is very beneficial to gardeners. So let me just go to the browse feature and start typing specific keywords related to gardening just to see what shows up. After I type in gardening, we see there are 199 websites that we could start looking through, over a thousand YouTube channels, over a thousand YouTube videos, and about 500 apps. If I click on the first one for websites, I'll get a list of websites that are part of Google's display network and the estimated impressions per week my ad could get if I choose to select any of these as manual placements. And I have no problem admitting that not every single website or app is going to be a quality placement, even if the URL or app name seems relevant. So as I'm going through and looking at these potential targeted placements, I like to know exactly what this website looks like to see if I want my brand to be on this website. It's easy enough for me to just highlight the URL. I use a PC so I can just right click on it and then go to this particular website. Well, you can tell what industry I'm in because I see a LinkedIn Marketing Solutions ad right here and then an Instapage ad at the bottom. So now I get a better understanding of where my ad placements could be. But then just looking at the content on this website, it's pretty relevant to what I want to target for this particular client. So I feel comfortable adding this one to my ad group. Let's hop back into Google Ads. If we look over to the weekly estimates on the right hand side, before I started adding any placements, my available impressions was 72 million because I really didn't have any targeting at all for this ad group. But now since I have just one placement, we see the amount of weekly impressions drop to just 5K. And I'm fine with that because with a manual placement targeting campaign, I'm focused on finding the right user, not really spreading my reach as much as I can. So just like how I reviewed this one URL, I would do the same for the others. But just to add more volume, I'm going to keep clicking on a few. And even on those few, impressions only shot up 1K. That's fine. The daily budget for this display campaign is pretty low. If I click on this left pointing arrow, it's going to send me back to my options. And then besides websites, we can also look at YouTube channels. If I target a YouTube channel, my display ad could appear on any video within these YouTube channels. This particular account is only targeting the United States. So while gardening may seem relevant, I see India and then I see Australia. Probably not the best options for me. So I'm going to keep scrolling down and nothing is really catching my eye. Maybe for YouTube, I need to switch up my keyword. Instead of gardening, I just did garden. Now I see a few different options. I popped over to YouTube really quick. This one is clearly all about gardening. So this channel looks great. And then I would do the same for a few other ones. Clicking on the left pointing arrow again, we can choose specific YouTube videos. Now let's say the first YouTube channel that we looked at had about 1500 videos. But thinking about gardening, but maybe my product that my client is trying to sell isn't great for all gardeners, just for a particular subset. I can try to look at specific videos to only have them show up on certain videos instead of an entire channel. And the first video we see is from the first YouTube channel that we added. So if I wanted to get rid of that particular channel and just add this one video that I have seen has had 12,000 views, my potential reach will go down, but maybe I'm hitting the more relevant user by targeting a specific video instead of the entire channel. It just takes a little bit of time to do research to understand what the entire channel content is about. And that's going to be different for every single account. So you just have to do a little bit of work to figure out what's the best targeting options for your specific campaign and heading back one more time i see apps most of these look like games and junk so in this particular account i might want to turn off mobile apps for my display campaigns and if you're looking at how to do that we have another video that shows you how you can turn off mobile apps as well as mobile app categories 
Now I know for this particular account, as I start opening up the app categories, there is an option for home and garden. And that one does seem relevant. But as I said, this campaign has a limited budget. So I'm purely just gonna stick with website URLs and YouTube placements. So let me go back. Let's clear out my keyword. I did mention that you can add specific video IDs from YouTube videos. If you're already doing research on YouTube, you find the perfect video or anyone watching that video would be perfect to see your product or your service. You can either copy the entire YouTube URL or you can just copy the video ID. This is going to be the combination of characters after the V equals portion of the URL. So as I typed in the video ID, no surprise that the only option we see is one video and there it is. I can add this particular video to my targeting. Now I'm getting really specific. You can see it is very easy just to start searching for options yourself. It may take a little bit of research if you haven't done it already, but let me go down and save this campaign just so we can continue moving on with the video. Now I'm in the ad group that we just created. We see all the manual placements that I have chosen. And then the type column we get to see, is it a website? Is it a YouTube channel? Is it a YouTube video? And if you selected any mobile apps or app categories, that would be defined in the type column as well. Now, what we just went through the first part of the video was when we're creating a brand new ad group. For whatever reason, if you want to add more placements to a current ad group, it's easy enough just to go to the blue pencil and edit placements. And here we see the same research box that we had before. You can remove certain placements, add new ones, and then save your changes. If you've already been running display campaigns before, whether they're awareness focus or even a remarketing campaign, you can use the information from a previous running campaign to potentially give you new display placement ideas. To show this, I'm gonna hop in another account. In this account, we're in the placement report. To get there, we can see off to the left-hand side, placements are showing the options that we have selected, but underneath that, we can look where our ads are actually shown. That's important for display campaigns that are more audience targeted, that you're not controlling where the user is actually landing. You're focusing on the type of user, not what they're looking at. A perfect example would be your remarketing campaigns. And that's exactly an example that we're looking at right now. After someone visits my website or performs a specific action that we're tracking, where are they going after that and where are they converting? Not really focused on the app portions here. Some of the top converting websites are gonna be very specific. We see that the New York Times is converting. I could go and start adding New York Times as a targeted placement because it looks like it's converting, but a lot of people go to the New York Times. It's going to be pretty broad unless you add very specific audience or topic layers to this manual placement targeting. Not my first recommendation unless you have very big budgets. But as you're going through your placement report, you may find particular URLs that convert very well. The one I'm looking at right here, startingyourbusiness.com, just the name of the URL alone is extremely relevant to this particular account. So if I go and create a new ad group for manual placements, this account has a different view, but we look at adding placements again. That website that was converting that I know is very relevant to my business gets a good amount of impressions per week. And besides that, it's giving me a few other ideas that are still relevant to this account's business. So I could want to select this one, then I can go back to the placement reports, keep reviewing where my ads are being shown and where users are converting. This account did not have this particular replacement as a manual targeting option. But when we started looking at historical performance, many people were coming from this website and converting directly from other display remarketing campaigns. If I want to try to find more users who could potentially convert from an extremely relevant website, I'm going to review my placement reports, get more ideas of what I could potentially target from a manual placement campaign. Another way I like to research potential placement ideas is within Google Analytics, and that is looking at your referral data, other websites that are sending traffic to your website. To find this, go to Acquisition, Alt Traffic, and then Referrals. I already sorted this one by the number of transactions. You can sort it by revenue. If you're not e-commerce, potentially you want to look at all goal conversions or maybe a particular conversion that's important to you. But here you're going to get a list of websites that are sending traffic to your website and converting users. Most likely, just like in the example we see on the screen right now, you're gonna see some of the more common ones at the top. A lot of Facebook, YouTube, but I like to expand the date range within Google Analytics and keep going and finding those nuggets. Now, I'm strictly paid, so I like to work with clients and ask them, do they have a good content strategy? Have they done a lot of PR in the past? Or they're getting mentioned in articles and blogs and those are linking back to the website. Are those articles, blogs, publications, whatever, are they extremely relevant to the business? If so, are those placements part of the display network? 
Can I go back and target them? I know I didn't go through the step-by-step process of how I really look at referrals for managed placement ideas, but if you want that information, you can check out a video I already did right here. Similar to how we looked at Google Analytics, I like to look at my YouTube analytics within YouTube Studio. So yes, this option would really only be available if you have a decent organic YouTube strategy. But once you're in the advanced mode of analytics, you can head to traffic source. And then I chose suggested videos. Other videos that are suggesting your content. So most likely they are very relevant to what you are already promoting. Now many of these are going to be our own videos, but some of them are not. This guy has a Google Ads tutorial. This guy is talking about Google Ads bid strategy. So in our case, these videos are extremely relevant to what the Paid Media Pros channel offers. And if the content is very similar, most likely that target audience is going to be very similar as well. So Michelle and I do have clients that have bigger YouTube channels and are constantly pumping out organic content. We can use the information from their YouTube studio and potentially find out different YouTube channels or just particular YouTube videos where we might want to add managed placements. It's always easy enough to just start creating an ad group and start researching options based on typing in certain keywords. But I prefer to actually get information to back it up. Are there particular placements that are already providing value to your business? Are they already driving conversions? Are they already driving traffic? And users coming from these particular placements are much more engaged than what you typically get. If you have the information from previous display or YouTube campaigns, whether organic or paid, start there first. Then if you feel you're maxing out the reach with some of those placements, start proactively going to YouTube or within this planner tool when you're creating an ad group and then test out some of those higher level options. Either way, I strongly feel that starting off with a managed placement ad group is one of the best ways to start testing the display network. You have more control and you have a better understanding of where your ads are actually being placed. Then if you're not getting the volume or the reach that you want, you can always expand it later on. What are some other ways that you have researched managed placements that we didn't talk about in this video? I definitely want to hear about it, and I'm sure the other viewers do too. So let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.